kind of humorous is that in this process of slowly developing the devotional network, the network of emotional devotion, the learning curve has been fun because I have changed my mind about not reading these beforehand. I don't read them from now on, but I will glance at them before I record them because I was in the middle of uh, recording one and uh, suddenly I glanced down, I read one page and then I read another page and then I looked and there were four more pages. I went, <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and read pages of material to someone and expect them to listen when for myself, I likewise would have a hard time sitting still and listening to someone else. So I learned that maybe I need to organize a little bit more. And then I got a good email from a person that's trying to give me some advice as they saw one of the videos and commented on it, you know, complimented, but, you know, mentioned about subscribers and those kind of things. And I've never really paid much attention to subscribers or non-subscribers or friends and non-friends and whatever because I have so much material on blogs and yada yada all over the internet that I figure well you know if you can't find me <laughs> oh well you know it's not me that's necessary to find and develop your personal relationship with God but it is an advantage sometimes when you have someone who can just let it all hang out and be real with you and who's been around the block and over the hill that isn't going to lie or you know make up religious excuses for things that are wrong possibly in the church or in each one of us but we'll just say hey yeah i blew it so did you so what <laughs> we're saved we're going on guess what <laughs> you know let's hear from god what's he got to say about it and you know that's probably the most important thing is what does God have to say about it? Because I don't really care about notoriety or infamy. What I care is what God says. You know, what does Jesus say about me? Okay, what's he say about you? <laughs> Maybe you're in better shape than I am. Or maybe since I <clears throat> got saved in the Jesus movement and quote unquote had that ridiculously outrageous feeling experience of salvation that I might have something to share about not being confused, abused, or misled by feelings, but God who sent his son Jesus to die for me was so intimate and real and still is that heck, maybe I got something to say that you want to hear maybe you can help me to read my devotionals because like i said from the beginning of this it's not always about you <laughs> it's not always about me sometimes it's about we and as the little piggies went we 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 all the way home <laughs> we need to get into the word because god may have something to say to us a new desire for i endorse and delight in the law of god in my inmost self with my new nature Romans 7.22 When we are born again, we get a new want to. The law says we have to, should, and ought to. But we want to do the right thing because God has put a new heart in us to replace the hard stony one that used to be indifferent to him and his will. Ezekiel 36.26 Learn to recognize the difference between the desires of your flesh and the desires placed in you by the Holy Spirit. Psalms 1, 1 through 2 says, Blessed, or oh how happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable, is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, but his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord. And on his law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of God, he habitually meditates, ponders, and studies by day and by night. Man, they're talking to the wrong person. Because <laughs> everyone knows I am boring. And why? Because that's 
what I do. I love it. I think about it. I conceive of it. I talk to God about it. I argue with God. I want to know. I'm struggling with times when I don't understand, when people don't know, when they don't understand, when they don't talk to God, when they don't research, when they don't want to know the truth. That I can't stand, so to speak, lots of times when I'm in company with people that do want to talk about football, baseball, basketball, entertainment industry, politics, religion, <laughs> all the different distractions and attractions that seem to go around the world and catch your eye and catch your attention and make you go off on a tangent and do this, do that, and wonder this and wonder that. and Boy, boy, for me, I got enough to think about when I'm just thinking about God. I lay in my bathtub. As a matter of fact, I was just laying in my bathtub uh, yesterday, in the afternoon of all things. And um, I was talking to God. I was saying, you know what? I really got to get a better handle on this evil. You know what I mean? Is it a force? Is it a person? Is it, you know, absence of good? Is it because of the absence of good that a power that is evil? Or is it we're just talking about the confluence or the construct of what evil is in the sense that nature abhors a vacuum and when you created nature you created it so that it would always have something occupying and that if you aren't there then something else has to be there and when you're not there that's what evil is or is it a power and a being that's we always see the after effects of it but we don't actually see the content of it so you know i'm busy talking to god about this you know of course you know something very interesting to you and probably me only but i want to know because somebody asked me about you know is something evil and you know the easy answer is well of course not it's an inanimate object it can't be evil you know though some people go crazy on that part because you know there's attachments to things but that's not what is actually evil so you know I was having this long you know drawn out discussion with God and the reason why I say that I'm the most boring Christian in the world is because I don't um, formulate an opinion just because I have one conversation with God. I think about things for years. I talk to God and I want to know first one little thing of it, then I want to know more, then I want to know how, then I want to know why, then I want to, and I keep going. And you know, God likes it with me. I don't know if he likes it with you, you know, maybe he's a little tired of you, you know, and you haven't been talking to him lately, or maybe you're talking too much to him like me. But the point is, is that I like that. I talk to God, I get answers, I know what I know, and you know what? I'm thrilled because I didn't go to Bible college, I didn't go to theology school, but guess what? I eat them up. <laughs> Every time they come throwing at me some terminology or some theoretical doctrine that they've got, man, me and God, we go to town. I mean, we do a number. I mean, talk about stomping, chomping, and romping on some intellectual minds, you know that have all the book knowledge and have all the word knowledge and seem to have all the knowledge of man and his logic but they don't have the Holy Spirit sometimes and zip, just like a rocket if you stick focused on God and pointing towards Jesus man you can confound the wise like Jesus did when he was a child when he went to the temple and spoke to the sages and the elders of Israel and they were dumbfounded by his knowledge and his wisdom and his insight and his intellect and the way that he approached it and that's what you can be you don't gotta be you know going to bible college for the rest of your life and spending buku bucks according to what they charge nowadays but all you have to do is seek the lord walk with him talk with him and read your devotionals get it out get it over with and get it done with god he's waiting for you he already knows me, <laughs> which is maybe why I'm on this side of the camera, but you could always send me your video, and you're on that side of the camera. But together, God is over all of us, and he's just loving to tell us how to start our day right. 